Hi Abigail, um, I just thought I would make you a quick little video to get you started on the questions that you emailed about. I did email you back about question one and um, really the key there is for you to try to prove them wrong, try to prove them false and then um, if you can't do that you'll have to say I guess they're true but if you can prove them false then you can certainly say you know therefore they're false so anytime that you can find a contradiction to the equation or the relationship that he's asking about then it's easy because you can just say therefore false so the first one is false and I did email you with a, an example of how to show that that was false the second one, um, what I can tell you there is if we have a to the n equals b to the m, then we first have to find numbers that will work there. Um, so maybe like 2 to the 4 equals 4 to the 2 or something like that. What's 2 to the 4 is 16, 4 to the 2 is 16, so that might work. Um, there may be other examples also that you could use there. Um, if you have an equation where those two things are equal, then a to the minus n just means 1 over a to the n. It's the reciprocal function. And b to the minus m means 1 over b to the minus, or b to the m, sorry. So if we were taking these values, 16 and 16, and we put them in the bottom, then they would be true. Um, and if you, if you work with a couple more examples like that and test them out, I think what you're going to find is that that statement is always true. So um, if we go to C, again, just try some values. So say we start with the same values that we did with B because that worked nicely. So 2 to the 4 equals 4 to the 2. Now if I choose a number like... Um, oh, I don't know, say 1 for k, then that would give me 2 to the 4 minus 1, which is 2 to the 3, and 4 to the 2 minus 1, which is 1. So if I have 2 to the 3, that's 8. If I have 4 to the 1, that's 4, and 8 is not equal to 4. So there's another case where we've disproved that statement. So um, that's all that's needed in that case. Uh, for number D, let's see what we're dealing with here. So really what they're saying here is x to the negative a equals y to the negative b. And then they're saying if that's true, does x to the b equal um, y to the b, uh, sorry, x to the b equal y to the a. So we're switching exponents there. Um, these exponents are different than these exponents. So I think if you just choose some numbers, you're going to find that that one's false as well. If you just choose some numbers and try to show um, that that is not equal with the numbers that you put in. Um, the only thing is you have to be careful because the first part of it, you want that to be equal. So if we stick with 1 over 2 to the 4 equals 1 over 4 to the 2, because that's worked for us before, um, and then we try to use that in the other statement, that would mean that we would have to have 2 squared equals uh, 4 to the 2, and 2 squared is 4, 4 to the 2 is 16, so already we've shown that that's not true. And the same thing for E, and E kind of goes back to the same thinking as A um, with the squared, only this time Choosing one negative and one positive is not necessarily going to um, get you there, but that's what I would do is choose one positive and one negative number for a and b. Um, oh, we can't because it's a equals b. That's the problem. So a and b are... Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's what we're supposed to prove. I just misread that question. Let me slow down and read it properly. So if... Um, if this is true, they're saying that a has to equal b. So if that is true, what if, let me see, if, if we use a negative number example here, then that would mean 
that B would also have to be negative. So in order to make this a positive. And so the only way that that can be true is if A and B are equal. So I think what you're going to do there is try a few examples, both with positive and negative numbers. And I think what you're going to find is all of your examples will check out. And then you can say, therefore, it looks like this statement is true. What he doesn't want is for you to prove that it's true. Um, you don't have to do a proof. You could show a few examples and just say, I can't find an example that doesn't work. Or you could explain mathematically why you know it should be true. And that would really be a better thing to do is to give a statement saying, I know this has to be true because um, if it's false, the only thing you have to do is find numbers that you can plug in that are going to show that it doesn't work. Even just one example where it doesn't work is enough for you to say, therefore, it's false. So um, that's all you do with these questions. Don't kind of get hung up on them. They're really not that difficult. They're not, you know, it shouldn't be a lot of work. And you shouldn't spend a whole lot of time on these. The ones that are on the rest of the assignment with the solving equations on the second page are going to take you much more time than these.